Well, if you know me, I always speak my mind on how I feel and what I think. And I think I speak for a lot of Australians. I thought that we might have a quick chat about this racist old grot here and her latest bit of newspaper headline jig dancing. Take it away, Pauline. Today on the floor of Parliament, as usual, they did the prayers and then we had acknowledgement of the country. That means the people who own the uh, traditional owners of the land around Canberra, but also to respect elders past, present and future. Well, I called out, no, I won't, and I never will. And I walked out of Parliament. I'll just stop you there for a second, babe. Um, it's funny that she said that because acknowledgements of country and welcomes to country were introduced in 2010 as an introductory kind of act of parliament, you know, they do it at the beginning of every sitting. Now, Pauline Hanson was readmitted to the Senate on the 2nd of July, 2016. And since that time, now I went and checked this on the Senate StatsNet website, she has sat through 238 sittings of the Senate. So the question is not, you know, why did Pauline Hanson refuse to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that she grips on the other day, but rather, why did she happily acknowledge the traditional owners of the land she grifts on for 237 times before this time? Just to clarify the question, back to you, Pauline. Today on the notice paper, they are going to put a motion to the Senate to introduce not only the Australian flag that now stands on the floor of Parliament, but also the Aboriginal and the Torres Strait Islander flag to, to take pride of place on the floor of Parliament. I am so angry about this. Those flags have never been voted on or for by the Australian people. Sorry to interrupt again, just stop you there for a moment, Mum. No Australian flag has ever been voted on by the Australian people. The first one was introduced by King Edward the Seventh, uh, 1903, and enshrined in law later on in 1953 in the Flags Act by Robert Menzies. Back to you, Mum. I see that welcome to country, acknowledgement of country, the Aboriginal flag and Torres Strait Island flag are nothing but divisive. It's not closing the gap. No, it's not closing the gap to do an acknowledgement of country or a welcome to country in health and life expectancy outcomes between Indigenous Australians and non-Indigenous Australians. You know what else is not closing the gap? The parliament that you're a part of. Only four out of 17 original targets of the original closing the gap report from 2007 are even on track. And that's because of a whole range of failings from the government, many very intentional, very much to do with entrenched systemic racism and apathy and penny pinching and ignoring indigenous perspective. But acknowledgements of country and welcomes to country could never hope to address all of those outcomes because they're simply little traditions. If they want the flag on the floor of parliament, then let the people make that decision in a vote. It is the people's chamber. It is the people's heart of democracy. You've never had your say. Righto, so Pauline's gone and got a bit of press out of this meaningless shit she's done. And so she's naturally fucking hyperventilating about it. Her page has posted four times about it in the last day alone. Of course, Pauline's the king of resurrecting a good old-fashioned bit of Aboriginal bashing, isn't she? That's where her whole cunt of a career came from. So now she's trying to mine some racist personal details from this whole thing by doing a welcome to country survey. I'll put the link for it in the bio, actually. Don't spam the survey with bullshit details. That would undermine the integrity of it. This kind of bullshit pretend outrage for attention brings out all the fucking howling boomer idiots drooling while banging their knuckles on the keyboard, pretending that this kind of stuff makes them angry. Like this old racist here, she goes, Welcome to country created by comedian Ernie Dinger for the tourism industry 50 years ago has now been politicised to represent ritualistic political subjugation. I'll fucking ritualistically politically subjugate you in a minute, mate. And that is a euphemism 
for pissing in your champagne glass there and making you drink it, you old racist dog. Actually, Ernie Dingo just helped to create a kind of a ritual verbal event commencement thing in the late 1970s. But that is only an extension of a cultural exchange practice that's existed in some different form or another for many millennia now on a continent that is lined with many different Indigenous nations, all of which, you know, had to develop their own protocols over millennia when meeting with adjacent nations surrounding, you know, communication or trade or, or what have you. It's all really interesting history if you'd bother to learn about it, all wrapped up in a very nice and respectful bit of tradition. I know it's tokenistic in the wrong hands. You know, I've sat through my share of hand-wringing white lefties who treat acknowledgements of country like it's confession time. That's cringe. I've sat through the assholes who do it because they have to. They can't be fucking bothered clearly. You know, that's frustrating. I know, you know, there's problems with the whole thing. But I know it can be cringe, but it's history, you know, in a nice little tradition. And it is. It's nice and it's respectful and it's an awkward attempt to fumble towards a microcosm of the the acknowledging the history of the place that we live on. And it's worth finding out about unless you're Pauline Hansen, who needs you cunts to be endlessly distracted by frivolous, nasty little culture war shit because Pauline does not have a big political agenda. How could she? We're already her wet dream in Australia. You know, we bend over backwards for fossil fuel investment. We ship off refugees to offshore detention, which is a fucking fascist wet dream. We didn't even bother to make the treaty with First Nations people that we bullshitted we would do back as early as the 90s. And we let racist old cunts like Pauline Hanson become household names for fucking decades. So there's nothing left for these racists except for to fuss over the dust specks on the fucking windowsill. You know, a flag in Parliament, as if that fucking matters. A lovely little acknowledgement. It's just a little tradition. Drag queen story time. Absolute shit. Trying to doll up the bullying of marginalised groups as though it's something that affects them personally because that riles up middle-class boomers with money and too much time on their hands. All the racist frothing and feeling sorry for themselves. It's just the most cynical, bottom-feeding shit imaginable. If you oppose the, flag, the Aboriginal flag and the Torres Strait Islander flag going on the floor of Parliament... Oh, yeah, and... She skips whole syllables when she talks. Parliament becomes Parma. Parma. P-A-A-M-U-H. Parma. She's always telling me she says what's on my mind, old Pauline. But that's hard for me because A, what's on my mind is not racist. But also B, usually what I think is in fully formed words and sentences. You know, I, I don't have the neurological condition of aphasia stemming from an acquired brain injury. So why would I skip all the middle parts of my words? But then again, Pauline Hanson doesn't have an acquired brain injury either. So what's her excuse? I think it's laziness. I think she's lazy in the mouth. Support me at patreon.com slash tomtanicky.